look with me. Uh, we're going to look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 20. And I want to teach from the subject tonight, the decision to believe God. The decision to believe God. Believing God is a decision. You know, uh, you have to decide to believe. There are people who decide not to believe. And the most astounding thing about believing is whatever you believe, no one can usurp authority over that. If you don't believe the word of God that Jesus can save, God can't do anything for you. He can't change you. Praise God, because he will not override your faith in what you believe. But if you decide to believe God that by stripes you'll heal, then can't no devil stop healing or any other thing for manifesting in your life. But believing, praise God, is a decision. You have to decide. You have to decide before you get under pressure. Don't wait until pain or sickness or, or disease or negative diagnosis is in your body. Then you decide, you know, I need to believe God. You need, you need to make up your mind, I'm going to believe God before the pain, the sickness come. Don't wait until you get into financial ruin and, you know, you get this bill and you're behind, you know, three and four car payments or mortgage payments. And then you say, you know, uh, I, I've decided to believe God for finances. No, you need to make that decision before the pressure come. Because under pressure, what you've been believing and practicing is what you will act on and come out of you. So I want to teach this tonight. I want you to look with me at St. John's Gospel, chapter 20. We're going to look at verse 24 through 29, St. John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 24 through 29. This is after the resurrection of Jesus, and he had showed himself alive to some of the disciples, but Thomas was not there. So we're going to pick it up in verse 24. But Thomas, one of the disciples called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples said unto him, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the Lord. And they said, and he said unto them, listen to this, except I, this is Thomas speaking, can see in his hands the prints of the nails. I want to see something. And put my finger in the print of the nails. I want to feel something. And thrust my hand into his side. Listen to this statement. This is where I'm getting my message. I will not believe. I will not believe. I have decided not to believe. Except I can feel something and see something, I will not believe. And notice no one could convince Thomas that Jesus was alive. Well, the same way you can decide that you will not believe, you can decide I will believe. I will believe God, regardless of what I feel, regardless of what I see. I will believe God. Regardless of the bills that came in the mail, I will believe God. Regardless of what the doctor said, I will believe. Now, listen to this. You cannot believe God if you don't know what God said. So very important. If you're going to make a decision to believe, you must first know what God said in his word. You can't believe and have faith in Pastor Diggs if you don't know what Pastor Diggs said. First step, I'm just trusting Pastor Diggs. I just believe Pastor Dick is going to pay my mortgage payment this month. Well, what we need to find out, did Pastor Dick say he was going to pay your mortgage payment this month? Faith comes by hearing, though, what God said in his word. And so that's why you got to become a student of God's word. God's will is his word. And Thomas grabbed the negative side of faith and said, you know what? I will not believe except I can see something and feel something. I call that sense knowledge. There are people tonight that will not believe that they are healed and so they can feel good in their body first. Or they can see that the, 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 the scar or the bump or whatever it is is removed. Praise God. Let me tell you, God wants you to take him at his word. So you need to make a decision to believe before the symptoms come, before the bad news come, before any adversity come, financial ruin Notice, no one could change them. He said, I will not believe. Well, the same way you can choose not to believe, you can choose to believe. Let's pick that up again. I just wanted to drill that, what his statement was. He wanted to see something and feel something. Well, after eight days. Well, he's in eight days now of um, unbelief. And through unbelief, the Bible says you can't receive from God. 
<laughs> you know, unbelief will cut you off. They which believe do it into rest. So after eight days, again, his disciples were within. And Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. And he stood in the midst of them and said, peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it in my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord, my God. Jesus said, Thomas, and I'm going to paraphrase, because you have seen something, you saw the print in my head. And because you have felt something, you felt it, the scar on my side. Thou hast believed, but blessed, empower the prosper, are they that have seen and yet have not, they that have, excuse me, they that have not seen and yet believe. They that have not seen and yet believe. See, that's sense knowledge, faith. There are a lot of people, until they see the money in the bank, they're not going to believe their knees are met. There are a lot of people who wait on their, 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 the support of their feelings first. When I feel good, I say I'm healed. When I can see that the doctor said that the cancer is gone or COVID-19 is gone, I will believe. But he said, more blessed are they who, I like to call it word knowledge. They have not, they, they believe and they haven't even seen anything yet. That's what faith is. Sometimes I don't care how much you teach your own faith. People still need to get it over and over again. Hebrews 11, 1. Now, now, faith is always now. And faith is not, I believe I'm going to get my healing tomorrow. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so that's where I'm getting my mess. He chose not to believe. And yet the beautiful part about this, Jesus met him where he was at. That wasn't God's best. He said, all right, you want to feel something, you want to see something, reach under your finger, put it in the print. Take your hand, thrust it in my side, and he go, oh, my God, it is Jesus. My Lord, my God. He said, you, he, he said, Thomas, because you've seen and felt you believe, but more blessed are they that have believed and not seen anything yet. That's what faith is, is trusting God when you can't see the money. It's trusting God when it don't look like your children say. You believe that God is going to bring them in. And the, the good part, that's what grace is all about. Even when our faith come up short, God met him where he was at. And God will meet you where you was at. Maybe, I'm not rebuking you. Jesus didn't come down on Thomas. He just said, that's not my best. You should have been trusting me regardless of what you feel or what you can see. And so Jesus came and met him where he was at, praise God. Hallelujah. And God will meet you where you at. He'll meet you on whatever level of faith you at. Amen. If you have faith, there's a grain of mustard seed. Hallelujah. He will meet you where you at. But God's best is making the decision to believe. And so I looked at that and I went back and I said, okay, Thomas said, I will not believe except I can see something and feel something. He made a decision. Notice no one, not even Jesus, until he decided to believe could change him. Well, if you can make a decision not to believe, you can make a decision to believe. And can't no devil in hell stop healing. I make a decision to believe God. By his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah, I know they diagnosed me with COVID-19. I know they said that I had cancer. I know that they said that the leukemia and lupus and all this. But you know what? I read the word of God. And it says in 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes, ye were healed. It says in Matthew 8, 17, himself, Jesus, took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. It said in Psalms 103, he's the Lord thy God that healeth not some, all of thy disease. So I choose, I make a decision to believe God, regardless of what I feel. Regardless of, you're not in denial. I hear people say, well, you just lying when I can see the symptoms in your body and, and you're talking about you are healed. And I can see the knot. I can see the, I can see the rash on your skin. Well, how can you lie saying what God said? A lie is a deception. I'm not trying to deceive you. I'm just saying what God said. Hallelujah. So if I'm a liar, then God must be. A, well, we know God is not a liar. What's happening? That's called word knowledge faith, not sense knowledge faith. I don't have to see it. 
I don't have to believe it, and I made a decision. Someone said, well, what did you die believing that? Well, glory be to God. I'll just open up my eyes in heaven saying, by strikes from healed, and I got healed. In other words, symptoms, I don't care how the pressure get, when you make a decision to, to believe, no one, praise God, can turn you around. The power of decision. The power, I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Your will is very powerful, but don't use it against God. Line up your will with God. Line up your will with God's word. Don't, don't line up your will. I will not believe unless. No, line up your will with God's word. If you abide in me and let my words abide, live in you, then you will ask what you will and it shall be done. You line up your will with God's word. How do you do it? By getting in the word of God and changing how you think. That's why Jesus' ministry was so powerful. He made a decision he would believe God. He said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, they're the words of my Father. He does the work. I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He lined up his will with God's word, and no devil in hell could stop him. Sickness and disease could not stop him. Lack could not stop him. He believed God. If it was not enough, if there was insufficiency, bring the fish and loaves to me. I believe God. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. And the multiplication started. And I'm going to tell you, that's a decision. Now, you say, well, how can you get to that place? Time in the word. Time in the word. Renewing your mind with the word of God. Say, hallelujah. Don't, don't sense knowledge, faith will rob you of God's best. And it's also dangerous. Because your senses can lie to you. If we was in this building that I'm preaching in and the fire chief walked through the door and said, the roof is on fire, the building is on fire, please have everyone leave. I'm not going to start sniffing. I don't smell no fire. Now, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to believe even though I can't smell, see, or feel. I'm not going to base my life on my nose. Don't base your life on a feeling. Don't base a negative diagnosis on uh, uh, your life on a negative diagnosis. Base it on God's word. And it starts with making a decision. Praise God to believe God. So this is what the first statement I want to make then. Believing God is a choice. It's believe It's a choice. Notice he says, I will not believe. Well, he made a choice. And notice God can override it. In order to get anything to you, healing, deliverance, abundance, the power of unbelief must be broken off of your life. That's the main thing God requires is that we believe him, trust his word. So then believing is a choice. Faith comes from whatever you believe, whether it's good or bad. That's the dangerous part. Hold that up there. Faith comes by whatever you believe. You can be believing the wrong thing. That's why it's important, the information, the knowledge that you're getting. There are a lot of people who just believe something bad is going to happen on Friday the 13th. Well, they're having faith in the negative. And you know why something bad happened? There are people who believe that, you know, I tell you, my daddy didn't live past his 50s and uh, uh, uncle didn't live past his 50s. And, you know, I don't believe I'm going to get to see 50. Well, guess what? You're having faith in the devil, faith in his works. And Guess what? You're having faith, but it's perverted faith. You're believing the wrong thing. And no one can stop you from believing that. There are a lot of people uh, here lately. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the media and all this, but there are people who believe certain things that uh, uh, this was a lie. You can be believing a lie, and, and it can cause reaction. You can't change what people believe. You can tell people, I love you. I love you. But if you say, no, you don't, you don't love me, I can't make you believe that. God will not usurp authority over what you believe. But if you line up your faith with his word, you'll see powerful results. And that's why it's so dangerous and it's so important what you believe to make sure that you're believing what God said. Example, Isaiah 53, 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the hand uh, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who hath believed our report? If you study this word, it's the same word. We say faith comes by preaching. How can you believe in him you've not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? 
And how can he preach except he be sent? Well, that word who have believed our report, it is, it is, it is literally translated preaching or message. And notice there's all types of reporters now. There are people saying, you know, the pandemic going to kill everybody. And if you start believing that, you'll be one of that number. Thank God for the lines that, that, that you know, that God has spared and people have recovered. But there are people recovering. But there are people who believe that the pandemic or COVID-19 is a death sentence. And that's dangerous. You're believing the wrong thing. He said, who will believe our report? That's just a report. There are people who are saying that, you know, uh, <laughs> every, we're going to all lose our job. Oh, there are people who believe that, oh, my God, the economy is going to crash. and It's going to get worse and worse. And, and for you, it becomes true because you're believing that report. But in, in Isaiah 53, if you read on, he was talking about Jesus. The report was, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, and with this strikes we are healed. But everybody didn't believe that. He paid the price for salvation, but there are people who don't believe that. And guess what? They are, they are going to hell. Not because God sent them. They just don't believe what Jesus said. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You can't make people believe that. That word report means preaching. I preach salvation all the time. Why don't everybody get saved? Because they simply don't believe what God said. They've made the decision not to believe. And you cannot usurp authority over someone's own belief. You must, only God can break the power of unbelief like he had to do Thomas. He said, oh my God, because I've seen and because I've felt, I believe it's you, Lord. You remember the spies that, Jesus, uh, that Moses sent out back in the Old Testament? The Bible talks about he sent out 40, 40 um, uh, spies. And, and, and the Bible talks about, well, excuse me, 12 spies. And the Bible says that 10 of them, there was one for each tribe, and 10 of them came back with a negative report. There are giants in the land, and we are but grasshoppers. And, and we can't, we, we are too weak, and we can't. God says it's your land. I've given it to you. But they believed that, and guess what? They didn't go in. They died in the wilderness because they made the decision not to believe. And it's amazing. I don't care how much you preach and teach. You have to, by faith, believe the preaching or the report that I'm reporting to you. And I'm saying to you that things are going to get better. 2021 is going to be a different year in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Year of recovery. Yeah, in the midst of pandemic, I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe that your finances will flow. Provision will flow. God will protect you and your family. No evil shall befall you. No plague. An accident will come now where you dwell. And even if you've been diagnosed with COVID-19, you recover quickly in the name of you. I'm preaching to that right now. The Bible says the word preach didn't profit them because they didn't believe what was preached. You can believe right now while you're at home and be healed. You can believe right now. The centurion said, Lord, you don't have to come under my roof. Just speak the word. I believe what you said. He said, well, your servant is healed. And the Bible says that when he went there, the same hour he was healed. What's happening? There's all types of reporting. You can turn on different channels. Some people saying things are getting better. Some things are saying pe things are getting worse. Depending on what church you go to, there are preachers preaching doom. There are preachers preaching everything going to be all right. It's, hey, whose report will you believe? I can't make you do that. So you need to believe the report of the Lord. By stripes you're healed. He bore my weaknesses, sicknesses, and disease. And the path of justice as a shine of light that gets brighter and brighter. Well, I'm going to believe what God says. Why? I made the decision. And what most people do, they wait until some sickness come or some pain come or some negative diagnosis. Then they want to go and try to get in healing tapes. You need to make a decision before the pressure come, before the sickness come and get in the word of God. Build your house before the storm hits your life and hits your body. Amen. You need to make a decision to believe God. So whose report? He says, will you believe? Who have believed our report? Praise God. So whatever the report is, good or bad, you believe something bad is going to happen, then you get put fire or give fuel to the fire and you empower the devil. And the negative manifestations of things to manifest in your life. Job got into believing that he was going to lose his children and lose his, 
his cattle and lose his donkeys. And he thought the thing he feared the most. And, and we're going to find, and I'm going to show you this in a minute, fear is faith. It's faith in reverse. And guess what? The thing he feared the most came upon him. Matter of fact, let's put that up. Fear is faith in the devil and his lies. It's perverted faith. There are a lot of people who don't understand that. They're believing the wrong thing. That's what fear is. It's believing the lies of the devil, believing the lies of the enemy. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my house. Then you believe you're going to lose your house. I'm afraid that if I drive a car, I'm going to have a wreck. You believe that you're going to have a wreck. I'm afraid if I get on that airplane, it's going down. You believe. See, you see what I'm saying? I want you to catch what's happening. You're releasing faith, but it's faith in the negative. You believe the lies of the devil. It's faith. God put a believer down in us. You can't get away from not believing. You're either going to believe what God said or you're going to believe what the enemy said. But you are always believing something. No, I don't believe that. I'm an infidel. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the universe. I don't believe in nothing. You believe you don't believe in nothing. See, you believe it. I want you to catch that. So you might as well believe God. You might as well because there's a believer down in you. And fear is faith in the devil and his lies. It's perverted faith. You're releasing faith. You're believing, but you're believing the wrong thing. I believe I'm going to lose my car. I believe every time I get a job, I believe I'm the first one to get laid off. So you, I fear, let me use the word fear because you can see what I'm saying. I fear that I'm going to lose my job. Well, then you believe you're going to lose your job. See, fear is perverted faith. You are believing something and you need to make a decision to believe God. Don't give the enemy, don't empower the enemy in your life by releasing fear in his life. That's all they got, fear-filled fear, fear lies. You're not going to make it. You're going to lose your car. You're going to get sick. You're not going to get the job. Nothing you do never work. Well, when you start believing that, that is faith. Fear is faith. So cast down those thoughts and imaginations, and then you need to establish your Faith on the word of God and not on the lies of the enemy. The only one who can break the power of unbelief over your life is you. I can preach all night. The rest of the day, you're healed now. Your knees are met. Now, I can show it from the word like I do. That's why we put the scriptures, the captions right under the screen, right under me preach. But I can't make you believe it. All I can tell you what God said. And the only one that can break the power of unbelief is you. No one could break the power of unbelief over Thomas except Thomas. He decided that he felt something and that he saw something, this is Jesus. Well, I'm telling you, you may see negative things in your life. You may feel like you can't make it, but I'm challenging you to make a decision tonight to believe God regardless of what you see, regardless of what you feel. I don't care if no money is in the bank. I don't care if you've been laid off. I don't care if you're going through a tough time. I don't care if things are looking bad. Start believing what God said. Hallelujah. That you're the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Start believing. And it's starting by knowing what God says. So your focus got to be on the word of God. And I'm going to say this again. During this pandemic, we're going to have to, we cannot get lazy. We have to be diligent in the word of God and in the things of God. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous time. Faith is called a shield. And the enemy is shooting at us. The Bible talks about fiery darts, shooting at our children, shooting at our finances, shooting at our job. And the Bible says the shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But when you get into fear, that shield comes down and you start believing the lives of the enemy. You open up the door to the enemy in your life. Faith activates God the same way fear activates the devil. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Fear is the substance of things not desired. I'm trying to show you that you might as well use that believer down in you to line up your will. And you're thinking with the word of Almighty God, hallelujah, so that you can begin to enter into his rest. That's what fear does also. It robs you of your rest. Job said, neither had I rest. Hebrews 
Chapter 4, verse 3 said, we which bleed the word do enter into rest. I want to show you something. Look at Romans chapter 4. Thank God for you tonight. Praise God. I, I, I plan on this year majoring on what I do best, and that's teaching the word, teaching faith, keeping people build up, edifying the body of Christ. Because there's a lot of negativity all out there. Y'all, it's, it's, it's out there, but it's, we're not going to focus on that. Bible says that we are to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look at Romans chapter 4. I want you to look at Abraham. It's something to, you know, Abraham was called the father of faith. And that, that, there's a reason for that. One thing you got to understand, Abram, who became Abraham, staggered at the promises of God. But after God changed his name from Abram to Abraham in Genesis 17, he told him, walk down before me and be thou perfect. Neither shall your name be Abram anymore, but Abraham. Abraham meant father of a multitude. And, and, and the reason that, that Isaac had not come yet, because Abraham simply didn't believe God. He, didn't, he was staggering at the promises of God. But after he changed his name to Abraham, which means father of a multitude, then every time God would say, Abraham, he didn't hear Abraham. He heard father of a multitude, father of a multitude. I'm the father of a multitude. He was, the Bible says his body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. He was 100 years old. But faith kept coming. Faith kept coming. He stopped believing that. I am the father of a multitude. Then he began to act like God. He began to call things that be not as though they were and say, well, you know what? I am the father of a multitude. And then he began to give glory to God. Say, you know, but I'm not even going to wait for Isaac to, to come. He became fully persuaded. And I want to show you there's something that Abraham learned that if you learn, praise God, you can change your life tonight. I don't care what your condition is. I don't care what the condition is. Finances, home, you can start changing it tonight. Let's look at Romans chapter 4 as you make a decision to believe. Romans. Book of Romans and then we're going to look at chapter 4 here. Let me find it. Romans chapter 4. And let's look at verse 1 through 5. Romans 4 verse 1 through 5. He asked the question, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, notice he's called the father of faith, as pertaining to the flesh, has found. Now, I usually want to read the whole thing, but... I want you to find out what he just asked us. Look at, look at the, look at the, I want to just put this up in the King James. If we can just do one verse, that verse one in the King James. I mean, excuse me, in the Amplified, it's already in the King James. Because he said Abraham found out something. So, so we, if we can find out what Abraham found out, then we can get the same results he got. Watch this, he said, but if so, what shall we say about Abraham our forefather, humanly speaking, what did he find out? How does this affect his position and what was gained by him? Now, now, how did it affect his position? What did he find out? How do that relate to you and I? All right, back, back to the King James. Okay, back to the verse 2. He says, for if Abraham was justified by works, Hath he whereof to glory, but not before God. But what said the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted or counted to him for righteousness. What did Abraham do? Did he work to try to become the father of many nations? Did he try to do good works and, and keep the law and, and not make any mistake? No. The Bible says Abraham simply believed God. He believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. In other words, that's all God wanted you and I to do. He believed God. It could surely have my worst because he got into that deal with Hagar, and, you know, and brought forth another child outside of his marriage. You know, it was, you know, this deal that God says is going to be by Sarah and they got over here and got with Hagar and created Ishmael. So it can't be by works because he made mistakes. But it said what? Because the Bible says what did he find out? Abraham found out how to trust God and to get God to treat him as though sin never existed. 
Because he found out I'm going to be justified by faith and not by works. It was accounted to him. In other words, best way I can put it, it's almost like you don't have any money in your bank account, but you got faith. God says your needs are met according to his riches and glory. You done paid your tithe. God says the windows of heaven is open. So what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to get out of here and try to get the money myself? Am I trying to, you know, start taking out loans? No. I'm just simply believe God. God says the windows of heaven open concerning my life. God says my needs are met according to his riches and glory. Now we're finding out with Abraham. And because you just simply believe God, God is like God put the money over here in your account. It was accounted to him. He didn't have to work for it. He didn't have to go out and try to get it himself. He simply believed God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not, not seen. So when Abraham realized, you know what? All I got to do is believe God. God says, well, I'm going to count it. I'm going to treat you as though sin never existed and as though Isaac was already here. Now, if you can learn that, that faith, hallelujah, when God sees your faith, it's like whatever you're believing, it's like he put it in your account. I think some of you women would call it, you know, getting a rain check. You go, you pay for something or it's called back order. And they say, we don't have it yet, but if you're willing to wait, it'll be in next week. Well, all they want you to do is, you ain't got to pay for this. The difference is, if you believe God, it's like you get a rain check for it. It's like his own back. It's coming. And then they, Isaac began, to, began, as far as Abraham was concerned, Isaac was already there. But it started with him believing God, and it was accounted to him. You can't work for righteousness. You can't work for healing. You just bleed God. If you bleed God, by his stripes, you'll heal. God says, I'm going to put healing in this account. Glory be to God. It's almost like the money is there. The healing is there. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It brings healing. It brings the money into manifestation like you got an account. You say, but, but yeah, that account is there by faith. When you get to the bank, it will manifest. God says it was counted to him for righteousness. And he didn't work for it. We're talking about we're talking about the decision to believe. He just simply believed God. There are people trying to work for healing tonight. Work for, for provision tonight. There are people that are trying to work. And, and I, well, I don't deserve for the house. God said, now, if you believe me for the house, then I will cause it to manifest. It's like putting it in your account. Now, he's asked the question, what, do, what did he find out? Because we need to find out what Abraham knew and walk in that faith. And God says, you don't have to make it happen. All your job is, is to believe, make a decision to believe. And as far as I'm concerned, it's put in your account. Your children's salvation, the healing, whatever. I'm putting in your account. Praise God. It's there by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he goes on to say here, then in verse, uh, verse 5 or 4. Now he that worketh, let me see, is it 4 or 5? He that worketh, let me see, let me go over here. Four. By him that worketh, the reward is not reckoned of grace, but of debt. In other words, if, if he earned it, then God owed him. No, no, it was by grace. But him that worketh not, but just believe. That's what I want you to do. Believe on him. Now, what's this statement? That justify the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Hold that there. God says by faith, he said when you believe, he justify the ungodly. That just means that folks that's not even born again, the wine or the drunkard, it, it's not their sin, it's not their drugs, it's not their alcohol, it's not all their stuff that they're doing. He said it's because they believe. He said if they'll just believe, I will make, justify means make righteous the ungodly. That's why you can't look your nose down at anybody. Because once they believe, God says, praise God, I will justify not the godly, the ungodly. It's not your lying, cheating, all of that stuff, drinking, smoking, partying. They're stopping you, your life from being changed. It's because you will not believe. You got to make a decision to believe. Because once you believe, God says, it'll be counted for you as if you was in right standing with God. Let's put this up in the Amplified maybe to clean it up cleared up even more so what shall we say then to Abraham our for father has humanly speaking what what did he find out what did he find out how does this affect his position 
and what was gained by him. But Abram was justified, established as just, acquitted from guilt. It ain't about being goody goody. Why, why God met his need, why is it came? He says, not by good works that he did. Then he has ground for boasting. And not before God. In other words, I live better than you. I read my Bible. He said, no, it ain't wasn't about what he did. Keep going. But what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. We're talking about the decision to believe. Sometimes this is so simple, we miss it. We think we got to do all of this. I got to read my Bible 95 times. I got to pray 22 hours. I got to go fast for 42 days. No, he didn't say he did all that. That's what he wants you to find out. Abraham didn't fast 42 days. He didn't pray 92 hours. He simply believed. What did God say? You are the father of many All you got to do is believe what God said in his word. And all of your shortcomings are, and God says, if you believe me, I'm going to credit it. Look at this. It was credited to his account. If you believe your needs are met, as far as I'm concerned, the money is already in your bank account. Healing is already in. That's all God, the decision to believe. You can't work for it. If it was by your works, then you can boast. But it's by the grace of God. Bible says, I think it's Romans 4, 16. That, that it is through faith and grace that the promise is assured to all the seed. And so God says, you know what, Abraham and Eve, I'm going to treat him like he haven't sinned. I'm going to treat him like he made no, no mistakes. I'm going to credit it to his account for righteousness, right living, and right standing with God. Now to a laborer. There are people, no, I got to work. I'm going to work for, I'm out here, I'm going I'm to have a, a cookout for the church. I'm going to sell fish and I'm going to, no, I want to please God. I'm, a, I'm washing cars and let's have a rum at sale and fish. Sale. He said, oh, no, come on. Now the laborer, his wages are not counted as a favor, but as a gift, but as a, an obligation, something owed to him. If you work for it, then God says, then I owe you because you, you know. He said, no, 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 no. It wasn't his work. Keep going. He said, but the one who's not working by the law, not trying to make it happen, but just simply trust, believe in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith. There it is. That's what God wants you to find out. If you just simply believe, God said it's like it's already in your account. You can't see it yet, but it will manifest. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put the healing. Just simply believe. Don't worry about your mistakes. Don't try to work for it. He said his faith is credited to him as right standing. Right standing accepted with God. Now, of course, he's talking about righteousness there. And there are a lot of people think you can work for righteousness and, 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 and all these good things and, and work for Jesus and wash cars and have fish sales and then I'll be righteous. No, God just simply, you are, you're righteous because you believe me. You're right standing with God. So sometimes this is so simple, we can miss it. So let me put this statement up. Abraham simply believed God and it was credited to him. For right living. He just simply believed God. And that's what's so beautiful. That's what grace is all about. We are saved by grace through faith. Not of works as any man should boast. If it's because I read my Bible. Pastor days is more holy than you. Then God says I'll do it for anyone. Anyone that believes God. And just simply believe. Hallelujah. I will credit it to him. For right living. Right standing with God. In other words, we're the righteous of God. You have a right for healing. You have a right to have your needs met. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Your righteousness, your rights in that kingdom, all those things will be added. How you get those things? Simply believe God. Believe God. Believe God. You can't work for it. It's by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if we get in the works, then someone else could boast. Because I did more than you. I, I've been to church every day for the last two years. And you, you missed the last two months. Yeah. And I taught Sunday school for 42 years. It's not about that. That's not what God's going to do it. God says, I will credit it to your account. Just simply believe God. And so that's what God wants you and I to find out. What Abraham found out. You just simply believe God. Quit struggling trying to get God to do it. All you got to do is believe all things are possible to him that believe. Look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 6. 
And see, religion says you got to do all this stuff. I remember when I was in the, quote, denominational church I was in, man. I thought, man, God, if you're going to please God, you know, I saw the sellings and, and you got to, you know, soup sales and ramen sales and watch cars, Saturday, and, you know, missionary circle number two and so-and-so busy be card raising money. You know, you sold donuts and, you know, the church got a quarter, Christian Korean got a dollar. You work, man, and you just knew, man, when you raised that money, you gave your report, surely reason God loves me because of my works. It had nothing to do. All God was looking for someone is to believe him. Not cooked fish, not fried chicken. That is not what pleased God. That, that, you know, that was, that was, I guess it pleased the bishop. They was the one getting rich. They was the one getting the money. God says, all I want you to do is believe me. You can't work for healing. You can't work for salvation. You just simply believe. And I think this is so simple, we've stumbled all over it and around it. And God is just saying, find out the promise concerning your children and believe it tonight. Go to Acts 16, 31. It's not about your words. You can't earn their salvation. Just simply make a decision to believe that. Like Thomas said, I will not believe. You make a decision, I will believe. I don't care how they act. I don't care what drugs they own. God says he'll say, me in my house, great shall be the peace of my child. Isaiah 54, 13, and they're going to do the will of God. And I made a decision. Yeah, but they're acting this. No, I've made the decision. Yeah, but, 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 but he went to jail. He, the police got him. At, I, I've made a decision. And God says it has nothing to do with your works. That why I'm going to do it. I'm going to credit it to your account. You believe God, let me handle that boy. I'll bring him in. You believe, God, let me handle your finances. I'll change this. I'll get the money, praise God. Ain't about whether you've been good or bad. Now, of course, we ain't talking about going around being bad. God, she ain't going to do it because you're bad. No one is going around sinning on purpose. But the point is, you can't work to get God to do it. Hallelujah. And once I understood that, then I just start beginning to relax. Once you understand that, it takes the struggle out of Christianity. You know, all God wants me to do is believe him, trust him. So I need to just get in this word, lock myself up in this Bible, and make sure that I get my faith locked into his word. It's not about works. And that kind of shut the doors to the enemy, too, because, you know, he's called the accuser of the brother. You know what you did last night? I didn't do it. You didn't read your Bible. You didn't do that. You know how you cussed three times. You got mad. And then the enemy will try to talk you out of God is not going to do it based off of your works. That's why you can't fall into that trap. When God just says, simply believe God. And Abraham made all types of mistakes, but he believed God. And guess what? Isaac came. Now, it took some time. God talked, spoke to him in Genesis chapter 12. He was 75. In Romans, it says that he was 100 years old when Isaac came. Sarah was 90. I know how to take that long for you. He was staggering at the promises of God. But he finally realized, I can't work to make this happen. That's what he was doing. That's what him and, 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 and Sarah was doing. That's, that may, well, let's get over here with Hagar. Have sex with her. Maybe the child, I'm old. And, and I, they were trying to make what God had promised them happen in the flesh. You can never, something God has promised you in the spirit, make it, bring it to pass by the works of the flesh. God says, I don't need your help. Just believe me. And as it will come from your body. Hallelujah. And I want you to, I believe, praise God, faith is rising big in someone tonight to just simply believe God, regardless of that. Look at St. John 6. Amazing scripture. Because people think God's requiring all this stuff. I got to... You know, cook chicken for the church. Oh, have a fit, fish fry for Jesus. And then we're going to have a rum and sell. All the men of the church, let's meet in the parking lot. We're going to watch cars. Five dollars a car. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what religion says. You got to work for it. Got to work hard too, boy. Get out of here. Cook that chicken. Fry that fish. Rum and sell. Baby contest. And, and the fish dinner. And, and slaw and pent and, 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 and this for that, and that's three dollars. And if you want, if you want some baked beans, that's four fifth. The church has lived like that. But you know, God is looking for someone to believe me. That ain't in the Bible. I'm just looking for someone. you can't work for this. And I'll show it to you. Jesus himself said so. That's why his ministry was so successful. 
And we need to find out what Abraham and then do what the advantage that, that uh, it gives us, the same thing that Abraham did. Now, if you have St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, let's look at this. I'll let Jesus tell you himself. Look at verse 28 and 29. Because they came and they asked the question. They said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus said unto them, this is the work of God. That you go sell fish, that you have a uh, chicken sale, that you wash cars. With. No, this is, this is the work of God, that you believe on him that he said. That's all God requires of you to do. You say, what? God just only wants me to believe the word? Amplified makes it even plain. Because religion say, oh, you got to work hard for the bishop. You got to. Sell donuts, and we got to have a soup sale and a supper sale. And Lord, you got to be out here and help wash cars and, 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 and fry fish. And, 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 and No, he said, what are we to do that we may habitually be working the works of God? What are we to do to carry out what God requires. Let me, let me, let me, let me perfect. What does God, what does God require for me to do? Because if I do the works of God, surely I'm going to get my children saved. I'm going to get healed. He's going to bless me with the how. You, you, look, look at what Jesus answered and said. Jesus replied, this is the work, the church, this is what God requires of you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent, that you cleave to, trust, rely on, and have faith in his message. Faith in me. Faith in Jesus. That's all you were. That's the work of God. Believing. That's right. The Bible says Abraham was justified by faith and not by works. That's what he found out. Now, that don't, don't get me wrong. That don't mean don't help your pastor. That don't mean don't help around the church. That don't mean, well, I'm just going to have faith. No, don't get out of balance. That just means that even though you sing on the choir, even though you usher in your church, even though you help out on your auxiliary team, even though you, you, you help and you work on the audiovisual team, even though you, 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 you work in the parking lot, even though that's not what's pleasing God, that don't mean stop. That just means that, that that's not why God going to heal you. That's why not God, God is going to save your children and cancel you that the reason he's going to cancel it is because you simply made a decision to believe that's what jesus said the work that god requires of you is to believe believe the word of god believe jesus believe what god says why are you doing all them good works but the reason he's going to heal you the reason he's causing your death to be canceled is not because of the good works that's not what god requires of you Religion man puts a heavy burden on folks. Cause religion say you gotta work, you gotta what, boy, what, you gotta work for Jesus, working for Jesus. Hallelujah! Oh, you gotta sing on the choir, you gotta sell chicken, you gotta help out with the auxiliary, you gotta fry fish and, and whoever make the most and, and turn in the money to help the bishop to get the robes and then you got to clean up and do this and we got to come out to the church and we, we got to work, 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 work. That's why the scribes are in the works washing cups and, and you'll find they're always praying long but they was always doing something and making people feel like they had to struggle. You serve God, you got to work. And yet God says no. All you got to do is believe. Jesus said that. That's what God requires of you. You mean all I got to do is believe what God said in his word about my children? Yep. And go to bed. Yeah. Especially during this pandemic. You know, everybody ain't coming to church anyhow, you know. So I don't want to make you feel bad, but, you know, that ain't what's going on. Why God going to do it? Because you sang on the choir. Because you even, you know, you helped the past out and. Painted this house, watch this car. Oh, that is good. You should do those things. But that's not why God going to heal your body. It's when you believe that by his stripes, ye were healed. And you hold on to that and you put it in your mouth. God says then, uh, it's like, it's in other words, <laughs> I'm going to use it. When I've been saying credit it in your account, God says you can bank it. You know, it's as good as money in the bank. You're going to see it happen. 
Your faith is going to put it. It's going to be a credit to you. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word of God. That's why Jesus said, come on unto me, all you that's heavy laden and burdened. Because the religion, the scribes and Pharisees had people washing cups and praying long prayers and doing all of this stuff. And on the Sabbath day, you couldn't move. And if you pick up that, oh, you broke the Sabbath. God. Oh, works are hard, man. And then the devil got in there. I mean, all of those works, works had that woman bowed over for 18 years in that synagogue. Bible says she had never lifted up. And there were scribes and Pharisees. And religion had bound her up. These works are like thereof. And Jesus saw that woman and said, woman, thou art loose from your infirmity. He didn't say I'm going to loose you. In other words, the law got you bound up. Words got you bound up. But now grace has come. The Bible says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. And he said, I'm here and you're healed. Never laid hands on them. And they got mad. The scribes and Pharisees, oh, it's the Sabbath day. You don't work on the Sabbath day. You don't move. You don't wash cups. You don't, you don't move. You don't do this. You won't cut grass. It's the Sabbath day. And Jesus had to teach them that man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath for man. And that woman's healing was more important. And the Bible says that she lifted up herself. Hallelujah. She was made whole. Why she believed what Jesus said. There are a lot of people bound up at home tonight. Man, God is just waiting on your faith to just believe God. Yeah, work, do the best you can, live a godly life, but when you come up short, that's what grace is all about. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So then, the predominant thing that God requires of us is to believe him, his word. That's the predominant, Jesus said that himself. That's the predominant thing that God requires of you and I. He said, what shall we, God requires us to do the works of God. Do we have to, you know, fast for 40 days? Do we have to, you know, you read our Bible and every day, all the whole thing? Do we have to, all of this stuff and work in the church and do all that? No, no, that God requires that you believe. His word. And like I said, we stumbled all over this. And when I learned this, I began to enter into the rest of God. I began to realize that, you know what? I can sleep good at night. I can cast all my cares over on God because I'm just going to simply believe what he said and let the word take care of my children. Let the word take care of my finances. Let the word. And whether I've done this or think I've earned it or not, hallelujah, it's not by works. It's by faith. Because if it's by works, then I could boast. You know, I read my Bible more. I come to church all the time. I keep my car clean. I'm a good person. I went and visited the sick. I help old ladies cross the street. You can do all of that. Do all of that. But that ain't why God going to hear you. Simply the decision to believe. All you got to do is make a decision. But that's all God requires. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to close with Mark chapter 9. Mark's gospel chapter 9. The book of Mark, chapter 9, look at verse 17. Verse 17. We're talking about the decision to believe God. Verse 17 says this uh, in Mark chapter 9. And one of the multitudes answered and said, Master, I bought unto thee thy son. And he has a dumb spirit. And whatsoever he taketh him, he turns him and he foams. I mean, this spirit, lunatic spirit, was trying to kill him. And he gnashed his teeth and pinneth away. He was biting his tongue. And disciples, I spake to the disciples, but they couldn't cast them out. And they could not. He answered and said, O ye faithless generation, How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him or threw him. And he fell down on the ground and started walling and foaming from the mouth. 
And he asked the father, how long ago was this? Sisters came on him. And he said of a child. And all times he cast them to the fire. Tried to kill. This spirit was trying to destroy him. He threw him in the fire. And then in the water. Then tried to drown him to destroy him. Now watch this. Then he asked Jesus. But if thou, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him. Now watch this. He took the ball and put it right back in his court. Lord, if you can do anything. Oh, it's a bad situation. This spirit is trying to kill my son. And it was a bad situation. He said, if you can do anything, then have compassion on us and help. Jesus said, if thou, if you can believe. It ain't, it ain't what I can do. It's what can you believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. That's just simply believe. He said, it ain't about what I can do. It's about what you believe because I can't do no more than what you believe. I'm able to only do exceedingly abundant love all you ask to think according to the power. If you ain't got no faith, then I'm limited anyhow. See, that, that's what people thought. People thought Jesus just, just, just zapped miracles on everybody. They didn't realize unbelief and faith determined what you was going to get or not get from him. Because if he could just come in and just heal people, and whether they believed it or not. The Bible says there in his hometown, he could do no mighty works. Why? Because of their unbelief. They made a decision. We ain't going to believe. That's Mo Moses. Bo I mean, that's, that's, that's Joseph boy. That's, that's Mary's son. And, and he's not his brothers with us. He went to high school and was a competent. How can he heal anybody? And notice because they made a decision not to believe. God couldn't do nothing for them. But he went out of his own town, went right down to Capernaum, and they believed God, and there was miracles left and right. So if it was just Jesus healing, whether you believe it or not, then their unbelief would have had no effect. He would have just healed. The Bible says he was limited. Why? They made a decision not to believe. And here he says, you know what? It ain't what I can do. If you can believe all things are possible, him to believe. And straightway, see, it's all God is asking us to do is get on. The father cried out, of the child and said, I believe, and here's what's the problem, but help thou my unbelief. I'm not fully persuaded. I believe there's all that is within me, but help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the spirit, saying, Thou deaf and dumb spirit, I charge thee, come out and enter him no more. If you read the rest of the story, the spirit came out, the boy was delivered. So the key is, he was saying, Help thou my unbelief. Now I want you to put this. And amplified, I think it's verse 20 to 24, so we can see really what was going on here. So the boy, they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, at once it was completely, he convulsed the boy. He fell to the ground, kept rolling, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked him, the father, how long ago had this thing came on him? He's from the time he was a little boy. And all the time he threw him into the fire. The water intended to kill him. But if you can do anything, do have pity on us and help us. Jesus said, you say to me, if I can do anything. See, it's not about what God. There are people, Lord, why don't we, can you get my finances? Can you heal my body? Can, it ain't what God can do. It's what can you believe? See, we want God to do everything. Jesus said, you know what? If, if I can do anything, why? All things. See, I'm trying to show you. We write back to simply believe. All things can be, and I'm Paul. You can get that new house. You can get your debts canceled. God can save your son. He can bring him out of prison. Praise God. God can heal cancer. Hallelujah. God can give you that job, even though you didn't qualify. All things are possible to him that believes. Simply believe. And at once, the father of the boy gave him an eager person and articulate cry with tears and uh he said, Lord, I believe. See, because people say, help thou my unbelief. No, your unbelief don't need no help. What he was saying is, help my weakness of faith. Help what I'm believing with all that is within me. And that's what I want you to understand. God will meet you where you are tonight. You might say, well, I don't have Pastor Diggs' faith. I don't have Apostle faith. Yeah, but God is saying, use what you got. 
Believe the best that you can. And where you come up short, I will, I will, I will make up the difference. That's what grace does. He said, help my weakness of faith. So God is saying, you don't have to have perfect faith. There are a lot of people think that their faith got to be perfect. It's got to be apostle faith. No, God says, if you can believe, put this up. God says, if you can believe, then I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. But I can't override your faith. And all I'm required of you is believe. He said, well, I believe it. have my weed. He said, okay. No problem. At least you do have some faith. If you got 60, I'll give you 40. If you got 40, I'll give you. That's what grace is all about. God ain't, is not expecting you to have perfect faith tonight. For your children, for your finances, for that. Just take what is in you. He'll meet you where you're at. You remember Thomas? He said, it's up. I can see something and feel something and put my hand in. I won't believe. God said, okay. The only way I'm going to get to him and meet him where I'm at. So he came and specifically said, all right, Thomas, touch this. Look at that. And he believed. God will do the same thing for you tonight. Just use the faith that you have. Simply believe. You can't work for it. And if I want you deserve it, God will heal your body. God will save your children. God will give you a job God will cancel your debt God says it's not about what I can do it's about what can you believe because all things is possible him that simply believe what God said Matthew 21 22 and whatsoever things you ask God is waiting on you right now whatsoever things you ask what do you need tonight children say healing finances job provision it's just as close as a prayer. Well, can God do it now? Can you believe it? Whatsoever you ask in prayer, having faith, that's all I require. And really believing. The God type of faith that says I don't have to see it, I don't have to feel it, but I see tonight, God says he'll save me in my house. I believe it. God says by a strike, I'm healed. I see the symptoms in my body, but I believe it. God says on the head and not the tail. God says, praise God, that he will, he will take the, what, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and restore. God going to give me back everything I lost in this pandemic. So I believe it. It's just as close as a prayer. Really believe it. Me and I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. That's sense knowledge faith. Anyone can believe it when they can see the money. Anyone can believe it when they feel good. God says, Thomas, because you felt and seen, you have believed. More blessed are they that ain't seen nothing, ain't felt nothing, but we really believe you will receive. This message is so simple. If you don't watch it, you'll miss it. Because you think you got to work for it. You think it ought to be good? Well, I didn't pray. I ain't really been coming to church. I haven't tired like I should. Well, believe God. That's what grace is all about. That God wanted his son delivered. He didn't have perfect faith. He said, Lord, I believe, but I got some issues. Help my weakness of faith. There's some things I ain't done right. There's some things I got. He said, glory be to God. I'll take what you got and I'll use it. Whatever thing you ask. Having faith, really believe. See, not perfect faith, but faith as a grain of mustard seed. And then we look at Ephesians as we get ready to close here. Chapter 3, verse 20, because everybody, he said, Lord, if you can do it, I know. Well, if you can do anything, he said, no, if you can believe. Because I can't override your unbelief. No more than I can override Thomas. Till I met his car. I found him where it was at. And God will come to where you at tonight. Right in your home. Now unto him. That is able to do. Did you get that? Just get that. So, now unto him that is able to do. And by what a God can do. He's able. Now unto him. What he can do. He can cancel your debt. He can heal your body. He can save your children. He can provide during this pandemic. He can give you a new job. He can make your enemies your footstool. He can do whatever he said he can do. Remember, if you're going to make a decision to believe, you need to know what God said. So you know what to believe. Now unto him that is able to do, not only can he do it, it just do it with me enough, but he can exceed. That means if you're asking him for a, 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 a six-room house, God will probably give you eight. Because anything we can ask, he exceeds. He goes beyond that because he loves us. And not only do he goes beyond that, he goes beyond it abundantly. Above all that we can ask 
or think that could be the problem. Your only limitation might be your imagination because you don't think that he can get to your child. You don't think that he can get you the money by Friday. You don't think that he can heal cancer. See, God cannot go beyond. As a man think it, so is he. So he can do exceedingly abundant above all you can ask or expand your thinking. Take the limit off God. Not only can God give me just a sick tool, God can pay my house off. I'm talking about the payments bleeding for. God might just give me the whole money to pay. There are things I was believing God for, things that I, I, I remember a little car I was believing for. I, I wanted, you know, and it wasn't, it was just, I thought it was cute. That first Z4. I was in that same and and I, and I was believing for the money, and, and, and God gave me the car. He exceeded my expectation. Why? Because he loves you. When my son was one of them graduated from NC State, the other one graduated from Carolina Chapel Hill, and they were good boys, and they, they didn't get, they had the money, but, but they worked hard to get their own scholarship money. They very seldom even actually for one of them. When my son, Tori, called them and said, Dad, you know, my job, uh, they held out my check, and I need my books. Can you give me $300 until next week, and I'll see you the money back? Well, he asked me for $300, but because I love him, I sent him $600. I double it. Why? God is the same because he loves you. And it is your unbelief that has been limited him. It is your thinking that's been limited him. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. If you got faith and the love of God working in you, God says, I can do it. It ain't a matter what I can do it. It's a matter of where you can believe it. So I want to challenge your faith tonight as I close, praise God. I don't know what you need from the Lord. I don't know what you want for the Lord, but your faith, let me close with this. Your faith don't have to be perfect. Use what you have. That's that centurion say, you know what? Lord, I believe. I believe. I made a decision to believe, but help. The, he got honest. And God knows you might be struggling with some stuff. But use what you got, Moses. What that's in your hand? Use what you got, woman. What do you have? Well, I got some, I got some, some, some bucket. Well, go, go borrow the, the, these vessels and fill them with oil. What? Use what you got. You got something. God says, move in faith. Don't have to be perfect. Matthew 8, chapter, uh, uh, verse 8 and 13, the centurion. He said, Lord, I'm not even worthy. See, so you can see he had some issues. That must mean, you know, my life ain't together. He might have been struggling with alcohol. I don't know. Might have been. I don't know. He just said, I'm not worthy. I'll come up short. There's some things in my life that I, I haven't fulfilled. I haven't done all of these works. I ain't been to church. I didn't pay my tithe. I'm not worthy that you should come on the road. But I'll tell you one thing. Only speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. I'm going to use what I got. I don't care if I do feel unworthy. And notice how Jesus responded. He met him where he was at. Jesus said, Okay, to the centurion, you go your way as thou hast believed. Not work, not because you came to church, not because you're struggling with alcohol, not because he says, no, it's your faith that's going to justify you. I'm going to count it. Is that, it. That's all I want out of you. And he's a Roman centurion. He don't even have a covenant, but he understood authority. He says, as thou believe, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed to say self-same. I, I believe you can pray right now. And tonight, things can begin to change. Your finances, your children, your home. In this pandemic, praise God. If you make a decision to believe, 